Running It Back is presented to you by the Honolulu Star Advertiser and Hawaiian Telecom. Welcome to Running It Back with Chad Owens, Ryan Kailmaka, and myself. Today in the studio, we have former UH football player who is now a trainer at Ikaika Athletics and an analyst for UH, Nate Ilawa. Yee yee! Yeah, nasty Nate! Nate. <laughs> <laughs> Nate, good dog. to be here. Good to be here. Man, welcome, brother. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to be here. Seen some of the earlier stuff you guys posted at the Aloha Stadium. So yeah, man. Hey, that highlight video was sick. I know, but talking about highlights, bro, you are and was a living highlight reel, <laughs> bro. I wanna, I wanna go back to. The, okay, so, so this is okay. I got, I got to tell this story, right? Because uh, what you you came in what year, Nate, to UH? Two thousand one. I was right after. Right after. Right after. Right. So so I just had my you know I was balling out two thousand you know two thousand one BYU <laughs> all that stuff right. And I'm ready to do my thing, and then in comes Nate Ilawa. Like who is this guy, Coach Ron? Oh yeah, this guy from Virginia. You know, big time. Oh, I'm over here I'm, and I see him out there. I'm like, God damn, this dude's quick. I'm like, I'm starting to get worried. I'm like, God damn, I'm take my <laughs> damn. Am I am I gonna be out of a job? Like what? what What's going on here? Uh, but I don't think I ever told you that, Nate. But I was like, bro, you had me, you had me working a little bit hard in the gym. You had me doing some extra routes, doing some extra work, bro. Because, man, your abilities was was crazy, bro. Well, I, I think it was mutual. I mean, my side of that story was I came in um, and got to see Chad live right off the bat, and I was wondering, man, who's this dude? And you know, of course, BYU game happens. You know, he blows it all up, but. You know, just his work ethic from the jump, you know, was something I took as a young athlete and added to what I needed to do. Um, and that was a lot of those guys, a lot of those vets, Stutz, mm -hmm. Shannon Harris. These guys kind of paved the way for us. And I know I don't look like a slot back, but I once was. <laughs> He's a <when> city. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were slot back in, turned running back. Turned running back, yes. But, um, you know, a lot of the things that Chad did um, rubbed off on a lot of us, you know, that were incoming and we wanted to kind of continue that. I appreciate right that, man. I remember, yeah. I remember waking up like an hour earlier just to go catch jugs before practice. That was your that was your routine. Yeah, and man. then the hour earlier just to get in a hot tub and cold tub just to warm up. So yeah, it was pretty gnarly going Preparation, to school. Preparation, like, man. Details. And then school right after. See, like, you, they don't understand being a student athlete. <laughs> anyway, my bad. I went off on a tangent. No, <laughs> go ahead. you're good. That's what it's about, you know? But, but Nate, what I want to ask you bro and i know you had ties in hawaii i know that swayed heavily on your decision to come to the university of hawaii but bro you were uh was it uh, washington metro offensive player of the year out of Vir mm -hmm. uh, virginia St north stafford yeah out of north stafford um yeah that was huge my dad had moved here um my junior year so i stayed in virginia my senior year and uh, uh -huh. when it came down to recruiting um i had a lot of places i could go but my mom at the last second kind of pulled the yeah, I'd want to see you play right here, you know, here in Hawaii, and that that was done deal. So I mean, bro, you had V Tech, you had Oklahoma, Miami, Michigan State, Miami, uh, BYU, BYU. <laughs> bro. Good. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, I, it was a, the recruiting process is one of those. You know, I had you know a lot of opportunities, and and you know, but the best fit was right here in Hawaii. I mean, I didn't really know it until the end when I got to know the run and shoot was here, something we ran in high school. My parents being out here, I had a lot of family already here. Um, the black jerseys. Yeah. <laughs> With the tattoo in the leg. Yes. Oh, yeah, I saw that. You know, and then, you know, I read about Timmy at, you know, being a young freshman, a young slinger across the country. His name was, was known out in the East Coast. So a lot of things kind of made sense for me. You know, it really didn't make sense to a lot of people on the East Coast. They're like, how much do they pay you to get out there? <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, Hawaii ain't got no money. No. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, no, Hawaii didn't thing. offer no money. VTech yeah. offered me 50K. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Rolex, <laughs> Corvette, Corvette. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, for me, it was a good fit, you know, and now, you know, we look back and it was, you know, worked out, you know, worked out for me, you know, tremendously. I mean, you know, the people that I've met, you know, you guys here, you know, even like nine, all these guys, you know, the people that you meet here in Hawaii, you know, the friendships hold way, way longer after, you know, the field and everything like that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the, that's the beautiful thing about here. Yeah, man. Um, exactly. Awesome. Let's talk about that feeling right after this. Oh, yeah. Take a break. Running It Back is brought to you by the Honolulu Star Advertiser, bringing you what matters. Viewers can receive full digital access for $9.95 with code thing. Hawaiian Telecom, 
Fiber power your TV and internet by calling 808-643-0900 or check availability at hawaiiantel.com. Welcome back to Red and It Back. We're here with Nate. Nasty Nate. Nasty Nate, man. <laughs> the human highlight reel. This dude was serious. Um, all right. So, Nate, you you know, you have an amazing, you know, college career here in Hawaii. Had a couple injuries. Um, you had one or two? You had one ACL? I had ACL and, and two shoulder surgeries. Two shoulders, yeah. So, the ACL, man, like, so not a lot of times, you know, people, when they tear their ACL, you know, they cutting, getting hit. I believe Nate tore his, if I'm not mistaken, on a cut, but kept running. Is, is, right? Did, did you score on that play, Nate? No, it, it was it was like a 50 yard um, catch and run um, against Appalachian State. Yeah, I um, remember that. Our first game of the season, and just a little backstory on that. I mean, we, we were up 21-0, I think, and I hadn't touched the ball yet, so everybody was kind of anxious. We had Chad doing his thing. Um, John West was out there running around. I think Jeremiah Cochran was doing his thing. Brewster was getting runs. I'm like, I haven't even touched the ball yet. We're up 21-0. So finally I got the ball, and I think I was just too excited and ran outside of my ACLs. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. But he kept running, but though. Kept running. The dude kept running, tore his knee up, and kept running. And that, to me, that's something that just stuck with me. Two things, your explosiveness from that. Not everyone will, that will – you don't just tear your ACL – making a cut like that like you are extremely explosive that the twitch that you had unbelievable mm. yeah but you know i mean i think that you know a lot of people don't we don't talk i don't talk about that season too much just because i wasn't a part of it but i mean you know, if we're just since we're talking about it now because the following game was at usc you know i had like 75 family members ready mm -hmm. to roll but yeah. the biggest thing about that season for me that, that's always been tough was i didn't get to play next to you because i was supposed to be our year yeah we were the next two slots to come up yeah. and um you know, it was a missed opportunity for me because I had to watch. And, you know, Chad was obviously doing his thing um, out there doing everything and more, you know. Um, but I was always like, man, I wanted to be out there with you and Jeremiah and all these guys, you know, all the guys, you know, because, you know, you work so hard and things like that. But, you know, that's one of those seasons where I was just like, man, you know, that was supposed to be me next in line right after, you know, the Stutzman and Shannon. And, and I was supposed to be me and you. And then we had Swerve and all those guys involved. Rick Comini and all those guys, yep. you know, the crew was, you know, was intact. Gerald. Gerald, you know, oh, and he Nick went through Gerald. ACL too yeah. at the same time, um, around the same time. So, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, that kind of missed out. And that's the tough part about injuries and, you know, the psychological game that comes in where you're missing it. You're missing the camaraderie because um, you guys are grinding, you know, college guys, they're grinding 24-7. Everybody's pushing, pushing, pushing. Mm -hmm. And then I was out right before USC. So it was one of those things that was super, super tough for me. But. Um, I got to sit back at the time and watch you guys do your thing. I got to learn. I got to mature, you know, on and off the field, you know, to get myself mentally ready for when I got back. So, man, when you got back, bro, you, you did your thing <laughs> and more, you know, and then you moved to running back. Was, was that something that, you know, Coach Jones, did you know about that prior to the season? Is that like what? How did that transition happen? Because I, I don't I don't even know. I, I know. Hey. You go from the slot back, and, and, and you're always sort of a thicker slot back, but you still had the speed. Now, yeah. when you transition to running back, what, what, how did that happen? I mean, it was just, I mean, timing. I mean, Devon Best had come to town. Ryan Grassmuller was on the roster now. Even Jason Ferguson. Um, or Tovey. Was in the mix. Oh, Tovey. Oh. After he got off the high dive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout out to Tovey, my guy. But um, it was just one of those things where we had, we were loaded at slot. Mm. And I was 40, 50 pounds heavier now <laughs> coming back from my injuries and things. But I was still able to move and do my thing. Um, and then, you know, going into Michigan State game, I think it was the second game of that season in 05. We're flying, you know, to, I think, Chicago. And then we jump from Chicago to Lansing. Um, but on the flight, Coach Jones just walks down the aisle. I was like, uh, go sit with Coach Swan and go over some of the run plays. <laughs> I was like, all right. So it was one of those things. I tried to learn the running back stuff the night before the game. Did a couple reps at the practice, walked through. And 260, then, 261. Yeah, let 261. Me get it. Let me go. Slipper left, slipper right. We just <laughs> and you know, and it, and it worked out because we had Devon and Ryan at that time in 05, um, which geared us up for you know 2006, which you know we, we did pretty well as well. Man, the greatest team ever. Right on. Sorry, Ryan. I was 
<laughs> that was an awesome post, though. That was 2006. That's great. Yeah, yeah. No, no, we'll get everybody talking about it. Oh, yeah. Post, I, was, yeah. I was trying to get this, you know, conversation Start started. Start it up. Start it up. He wanted to spark rub, it, but I was like, I don't want to hold some argue elbows. With you, buddy. But, you know, 2016 <laughs> had all these guys on it, too. Um, you know, we just had a couple games that got away from us. But 2007. Oh, man, that Boise game still ha game. haunts me, man. Oh, it was just Boise. always talks that turf, about that game. That turf. Ugh. No, it was that, here. When we, had him, when we had him here. Oh, that too. Oh, oh five. my God, man. It haunts me. He was beating them too. They took back this punt. Oh, my God. <laughs> they had blocked our extra point. Were we supposed to tie? Yeah. I don't want to talk again. Okay, move on. That's okay. That's okay. We no, we want to talk about this. You ended up so beating the, the greatest team, right? The greatest team. That was 05. That was 05. That was 05. It was when we played him. Played him here. But, yeah, well, you know, the greatest team talk um, all the time goes on, but... We can talk about this yes. right after the break. Oh, damn it. Oh, you good. Thanks, Q. <laughs> Safe and effective COVID-19 vaccines are important tools to protect our families and community. If you have any questions about the vaccines, visit hawaiicovid19.com slash vaccine. Izzy tows it, providing towing services island-wide. Visit towingserviceoahu.com. Okay, we're back to running it back and we're here with <laughs> Nate. And so, Nate, we are on, you know, our podcast, the Running It Back podcast, but we wanted to ask you, what is that moment where you can run it back? What was your running it back moment? The whole, like, aha moment where you can just think about that changed your life forever. Oh, man. Well, yeah, something that you, 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 you maybe reflect on, yes. you know, every now and then, like, uh, maybe it was a decision, maybe it was uh, an encounter with a family member or someone, like a running it back moment. If you could go back. To replay it was that, that yeah, that that moment sort of did something for you. Well, I mean, I probably have to go with my high school coach. I had a high school head coach who was um, just awesome. You know, he was young, um, but he was able to see something in me that I I, I didn't notice, um, mm -hmm. and he was able to kind of tell me and then work with me. Um, that was my coach, Chris Beatty, um, and you know, I, I, when I was a sophomore at one time, I was training. I ran my forty for the first time ever, and I ran a four seven five. <laughs> And I was like, oh, man, I ain't going anywhere for college and anything like that. And so he sat me down. He was like, you know, you got good football IQ. Um, you just need to do this type of training. You know, don't miss a day. You know, go twice a day, whatever you got to do. And I believed in that was when I was a sophomore. And then you know, I was able to run sub 4-4s four by the time I was a senior. Um, but it was, it was one of those things where I was like on the borderline of, man, 4 seven is not going to get me anywhere. Mm -hmm. But he sat me down, you know, and just laid out this plan for me. Um, and I kind of I kind of carry that on to now, you know, into life and anything that I do, you know, it might be kind of far fetched or whatever. But if you just sit down and throw down a plan mm -hmm. and then attack it accordingly, you know, um, things things usually work out for the better, um, you know, and then these guys are examples, um, you know, Chad, um, the walk on story, you know, coming to UH and I've seen him grind, you know, and earn his keep, um, you know, Ryan as well. I don't know if Ryan knew this, but a lot of people thought he only got on to UH because of Chad. <laughs> but <laughs> he came out there and earned his keep. I saw his state title track meet, and I was like, oh, okay, this guy, this guy's oh, he this earned guy his keep. I, he yeah. earned his keep. No, he I helped it. open the door, yeah. but he had to come deliver the goods, oh, no. right? And, and what Ryan always tells his story. First day out there, what you pick off Timmy how many times? Bro, like three, four times, man. The, like you know how we do like the off, like little workouts on the field. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we just get together. And as I was, I didn't even know the plays. I was just yeah. playing free safety. Oh, you that's know? what I'm saying. But so to see him come in and everybody's like, oh, this guy's. But he earned his keep. You know, I always remember San Diego State with this guy picking the ball off. Ooh, yes. And doing all kind of juke moves he did he did in practice. But I could just look at him. He's probably laughing in his helmet. He's <laughs> giggling while he's juking. Turns and then pitches it to Kenny Patton. You know that that stands out. But you know. To have individuals yeah. who've also gone out, probably had a plan and worked, um, it's awesome for me. You know, I've had that happen in my life. But to see it live, you know, my close friends and teammates um, just goes to show, you know, that it, it works, you know. and Yeah, so all you young home. athletes that's watching now, anybody who's watching this right now, yeah, you got to have that plan, all right? Success doesn't just happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. goes, fail to plan, plan to fail. That's what they say. And... <laughs> Yeah, True. I mean, you want to give yourself the best opportunity. And sometimes it takes someone else. It was a coach for you yeah. to, to, to give you that guidance, to give you the plan, to give you that belief system. Same thing for me. Coach Reggie De La Cruz. 
out of, college, out, out of high school, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know where I was going. I had no plan. And actually, I, I somewhat had a plan. Like, oh, I'm going to go to, I think it was Linfield. I'm going to go mm-hmm. away for a couple years, maybe Juco. I don't know. And, and then maybe come back. And I told Coach Reggie the story. He's like, why, why are you, you going to do that? Why don't you walk straight on to the University of Hawaii? At the time, I didn't know what that meant. This is mm-hmm. how yeah. disconnected I was with the whole process. We talk about the process. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know what that was. Same here. He's like, bro, walk on right away to the University of Hawaii. I'm like, you think I can do that? He said, he said heck yeah. Like, because I, I guess I didn't believe in my own abilities. I knew that I was I had some talent, but I didn't know I had the talent to play at that level right away. He believed in me, right? Your coach believed in you. You ran four seven. Like, man, I ain't, they ain't gonna cut it. I said, man, <laughs> nothing against my high, my high school, but I mean, I went to Roosevelt. I, I didn't get a big name. I wasn't the all state guy. I it that didn't matter. You put in the the plan. You put in the work. You give yourself a chance. Oh yeah, right. In your story, I mean, everybody would always tell me about. You know, they went to go see Kapanui throw. And they were scouting him, and then they see this guy catching passes, and they're like, oh, Kapone, okay. Oh, who's this guy? Bro, by the scoreboard yeah. on, on, on dirt. <laughs> oh, yeah. The field was being renovated. And Ron Lee would always tell me, like, ah, we, this guy was just out there, you know, cutting, catching, diving for passes, just doing all he could to get noticed. And it did. And, it, you know, he was, it it was walking on, but, you know, I got to see him live. I got to see this guy work, you know, and earn, you know, everything he wanted. Um you know, even from the Too Fast, Too Furious shirts that came out. I mean, Ooh. All the, <laughs> from all that time, I've seen Chad work, you know, all the way, you know, through the levels and everything that he's doing now. So I know these guys got plans right now of what they're trying to do in their lives, you know, and I got plans and we all, and everybody should have plans, you know. Yep. And then, you know, and then I think the coolest thing is to just keep yourself surrounded by people mm-hmm. like like-minded minded goals, yep. you know, and people that are trying to push forward. Um, and, and Hawaii has a lot of them, you know, yeah. and my thing to, for a lot of kids out there is, latch on to the ones you can find and you know a lot of people that are in our position you know go down and you know help help younger individuals out which you guys do you know I mean, we, we, exactly. which all you guys do so you know, that's that's the thing i think you know running back being able to give back at the same time you know doing mm-hmm. you know you've had some success and you know help some other some other younger individuals that's awesome yeah. we'll talk more about what you do for kaika athletics right after oh, this yeah. Running It Back is brought to you by Aloha Termite and Pest Control, your local and leading pest and termite control solution in the state, always providing you superior service with Aloha. Okay, and we are back here with Nate. Thank you for being here, Nate. We were just talking about, you know, having a plan and what you do and what you tell these kids that you train. So tell me a little bit more about what you do at Ikaika Athletics. Yeah, so um, our former teammate, Mike LaFaella and, uh, and I, we, during the pandemic type run, he, he had an idea like, hey man, let's get our own spot and facility to start training kids. And um, we had been training kids in the parks, you know, trying to hide from police and all that stuff. Right. <laughs> but everybody was getting, you know, we were getting shut down with a lot of things. So, uh, we, you know, Mike wanted to get a facility um, and we were able to do that, you know, earlier, you know, at the beginning of this year. Um, where our main thing is we're trying to provide the environment, you know, for these young athletes right now, specifically football. Um, we're trying to provide that environment for them to excel. Um, unfortunately we have experience, um, in some of these things, but, um, what we're trying to do is take these young athletes, whether it's, you know, intermediate kids trying to, trying to make the varsity team or the varsity kid trying to start, um, the starting kid in varsity, trying to get to college. We try to, um, cater to each of their levels, um, you know, as far as where they're at, where they need to be, what they need to do. You know, football is not one of those sports you can just go to the gym, shoot hoops by yourself. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we try to create that group, you know, and, and these guys understand that, you know, it's it's different when you're with the group. Everybody's pushing each other. Yep. Um, everybody's iron positive. Sharpens iron. Yeah, you know, and you just natural, friendly competition where um, that's just how it is, you know, for me, for us, for football. And so we want to provide that environment, you know, uh, for them to come in and not just get better, um, as athletes, um, we try to provide some mentorship along the way um, to help these guys understand that, you know, if you have um, everything off the field in place, um, it allows you to perform, you know, better on the field. You know, it's easier mm-hmm. to if everything's good, you know, at the house, you know, everything's in line, your grades and things, you're not thinking about much. You can just come here and think, compete, yeah, and focus, and, just focus yeah. and, 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 and work your, and sharpen your, you know, your tools and and work your craft, you know, and, and that's what we do at Ikaika um, Athletics. We provide that environment, you know, for, for, young, for young athletes, whatever level it is, um, to be able to 
to reach the, the next level, as, at least physically, you know, at this moment. I yeah. think that's a great way to give back to. Of course. Especially and, and here in Hawaii. Big time. Everyone's always. always looking for that edge, right? Mm -hmm. and, and how can people get a hold of Ikaika yeah, Athletics? Yeah, sign up? Um, IkaikaAthletics.com. Um, you know, they have the website. You know, there's uh, different programs you can sign up for. Um, we're running um, from Monday through Friday. Um, you can go the whole monthly package. Um, there's also, you can go specific workouts. For example, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is more football conditioning, um, some form running, um, things here and there. We're, we'll get them in shape for their season. And then Tuesday, Thursday is more uh, position specific. Um, mm. Mike obviously handles a lot of the linebacker, D linemen, um, hand placement, things like that. I take some of the skill guys. You know, we run some, some jukes and some agilities and things like that. Um, and, you know, we, we kind of try to try to attack everything, but not everything all at once. You know, we have certain days for certain things. For some athletes, for example, a lot of the college kids are home. Um, they enjoy the Tuesday, Thursdays because that's more on the, you know, on their level. They want to sharpen up their hand placement, you know, their bag, the shedding blocks, um, mm. hitting slip, proper leverage and all those things. Um, for just your intermediate kid that's trying to move up, um, we have just conditioning. You know, we, we put them through where you know, they get themselves in shape before the season starts. Right on. That's awesome, man. Wow. Yeah. And, and the biggest thing, though, the biggest thing that I that I love about that is that you have a couple guys, yourself and Mike, that's been there, done that. And like your coach provided for you, you guys can provide. It's, it's, it's the mental. It's the mentorship. You talked about that. I think that is the things that's going to stick with these athletes as it did for you, as it mm -hmm. did for me. Ryan, whatever coach or mentor-like person or figure that's in your life, those are the things that, that you remember, right? Oh, yeah. So, you know, you guys are instilling in these young athletes the mental edge and what it takes to be successful because the physical, they're, they're putting in that work, yeah. right? They're going to do that. Mm -hmm. But the edge, right, the edge comes <laughs> when you have that mental um, advantage. So, Nate, man, I appreciate you so much for this. Uh, but stick around because we got the extended version uh, coming up on YouTube. So, look, you guys... Go to YouTube for the extended version. We're going to be here with Nate Ilawa talking more about what he's doing and where he's going. All right. Welcome to our YouTube extended version. We are here with Nate Ilawa. Thank you for joining us. Nice to meet Yeah, brother. Um, so many things, bro. So many things. You know, one thing I do want to talk about is, is your family. You know, it is family that, that got you to come to Hawaii to be here. Let's talk about your family. It ain't a it ain't a little family, bro. It's it's a family of <laughs> it's a eight. Growing. Family of family eight. of eight, bro. How is that? Well, I married up first of all, so I'm in good hands. My wife, she handles a lot of the kids stuff, but um, you know, my wife's annoyed. Um, she wanted a big family. I enjoy big families, um, so we got one. So um, you know, awesome. she does a lot of the things um that allow me to get out there and you know, kind of do you know what I need to do to help provide. Um, so I got my oldest is 11, Aaliyah. Um, I got an eight year old, Tiana. Um, I got a seven year old, Soraya. I could have put myself in a binary. I'm trying to get the name. <laughs> <laughs> Take your time. Take Jackson. Your time. Jackson. Okay. My fourth is my first, oldest boy. He's six. Um, Naomi. Uh, she just turned four. Um, and Lokeni. He just turned three. Wow, such beautiful names. Yeah. Man. Love Busy. that. Yeah, the cool thing is they all named each other, or my oldest kind of named all of them. Yeah. So they're, they're held responsible. So hey, <laughs> you named them, you got to help them. <laughs> well, shout out to your <laughs> wife, because your wife is an amazing mother. Yes. Oh, yeah. Six? Yes, yes, yes. I just can't imagine. You know, and they're awesome kids, too. And I know I'm kind of biased, but, um, you know, they come from good stock, thanks to my wife. You know, my my input is, you know, I'm just a disciplinary kind of part. But <laughs> I got some awesome kids, Um, you know, and, you know, they're starting to get into sports, too. You know, which is cool. So I kind of just kind of train them. Yeah, and then yeah. You know, they're gravitating towards volleyball. My wife was a volleyball player, so um, shout out to Menlo Ath Atherton or Menlo College in in the Bay Area. Mm. Um, but it's exciting. You know, my my oldest is you know getting into volleyball, starting to love it. You know, now it's my kind of thing. I wanted to let them gravitate to what they wanted to do, and then you know I'll kind of back it up with like workouts and things like that, and kind of get them ready and things. But it's exciting. They're starting to, to go to their clinics. They come home they want to practice outside with their papa and everything and um but yeah family you know it's huge you know it's, i think it's huge for all of us here um and it's one of the things that helps me and drives me and you know on a day-to-day -day basis yeah nice. man, totally. it's a beautiful thing man i want I, i'm just for me i got a family of five a, a, a night out eating is like oh, man. you know for eight though 
Well, you still got some young ones. They, yeah, they're, Disney, sharing. Disney they're sharing. They're sharing. You can yeah. still share it here, like yeah, they're twelve share. years old. Disney Plus, though, you just you know order the movie, and get the new movie from Easy. Disney Plus. <laughs> yes. Going out to theaters about two fifty, three hundred for us, you know, because they just want them ices, and I'm like, oh, yeah. Well, thank goodness now you can, ever, you can do it at home. home. I just want the ices. <laughs> My kids don't watch the movie. They'll just be outside, just refilling their ices back and forth. I'm like, oh, that was oh, me. That was you me. Should just go to Seven Eleven and just pull up a screen or something. Yeah. Bring your own cooler <laughs> to the movie theater. All right, Nasty Nate. Yes. I got some rapid response questions, Ooh, right? Re- rapid response. Uh, what is it? Yes. So it's quickness. Like, <laughs> it's just, yes, it's quick, quick, quick answers. Not Don't, don't try to think about it. Just pat, 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 pat. All right, here All we right, go. Here okay. we go. Dog or cat? What did you say? Dog or cat? I thought he said dollar cat. Dog. Dog person. All right, all right, all right. Five guys or in and out Burger? in and out all the way. Mm. In and out all the way. Wait, wait, wait. Five guys here or five guys? Because five oh. guys here is 15 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like five paychecks is what they should call it. It's, you know, like, and that's just the burger? I can't get any tots or anything? <laughs> and the fries? Oh, nasty. Yeah, name. in and out. In and out, though. Nikes or Adidas? Nike. Damn. Yeah, he didn't let you all finish. Right. Yeah, no. Papa John's or Pizza Hut? Papa John's. Really? Because they had Garlic a campus sauce. special at UH. That's the reason. Remember, it was nine dollars. <laughs> Hercules, I tell it. He was the main guy Saturday morning. He's ordering all of us one. Whoever didn't wake up had to go get it. So wow. Moanis or Mai Tais? Mai Tais. Ooh, I never OG. went to Moanis. You never went? Well, I've got six kids now. I can't go. Out. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, well, you it's know, not a family. Friendly. We're not gonna get. We're not gonna get past the the kids' playground they got over there now. Or the- Matsumoto's. <laughs> Or Wyola shave ice. Not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. No show. Sure. Okay, okay, okay. I can yeah. see your, your, your taste. I want to yeah, but, but we're going to change that. <laughs> we got to take him to Kula shave ice. Oh. oh. Kula shave ice is good. Yeah, oh, Kula it's all organic. Okay. I'm telling Bro. you. They open back up June it. 11th. North Shore. Haleiva. Right there at the beginning. I just had to throw it out there because. The, I, the, is that the, the one you always, I see in your the video? Posting, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. June 11th. Oh. Snow opening. cap or no snow cap? Everything. Everything. <laughs> Chocolate, mochi everything. balls, everything. everything. Yes. Double mochi like Ryan. Double mochi. <laughs> okay, carry on. You got a couple okay, more? Okay, go, go, go. Yes. The ladder. This is a long ladder, bro. Sunrise or sunset? I don't neither. I haven't seen any in a while. I got what? You <laughs> <laughs> live on the island. Yeah, but either I got to be sleeping or I'm not up or I'm doing True, something. I guess so, huh? We're in Waipawa, but if I was on the coast, then I'd say sunrise. Two or three more I got. Here we go. Mmm. Goonies or the never ending story? Oh, that is the best question. I'm gonna go with Goonies. Okay, okay. The version they had the octopus though, not the old not where they cut the octopus out. Like did you know that? Which one? They used to have an octopus in the See Nate's a, the Nate is a real like real Goonies. Right fan, outside though. of the ship. They used to have they had a scene where the octopus was grabbing them when they fell off. Oh, I didn't see that one then. See I only remember that when I was really younger. You didn't know that. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll Deep find dish it. or th- or thin? Crust pizza. Thin. Thin? Yes, I like the New York style too. I, mean, I love thin crust. Yeah. Okay, last one. Tupac or Biggie? Ooh. Wow. I'm torn. I say too big. Like <laughs> <laughs> uh, too big. You know, I grew up, I grew up in California. Exactly. So I was all Tupac. And this is before any internet stuff. So it was, I was all Tupac. Yeah, yeah. Then I moved to Virginia. And all my friends are all Biggie, so I was like, oh, you guys are killing me. <laughs> but then I got a couple of their CDs, and I was like, you know what? This guy ain't that bad. You know, but it's just back then, it Too was just, big. it was one or the other. Yeah. And it was kind of like, so I finally got the, and you know, they're both real, real awesome. Legends. Artists, yeah, in their own way, yeah. Awesome. Too big. Shout Too big. To Too, big. <laughs> Too big. All right, I'm good. With my rapid. That's good shit, though. That was oh, nice. That was good, Brian. That was good. So, so, Nate, like, you know, we talked about what you did past, what you're doing now, like, but future goals man what's what what's that for you like what's what's the ultimate goal the ultimate dream for you yeah so i'm also a, i i'm a scout for nsr um it's national um um scouting report um it, it kind of you know allows you know athletes to kind of have an idea on how the recruiting process starts um but that kind of mixes into what i you know i ultimately want to do you know i want to coach on the next level you know, uh, you know, as a college coach for football. Nice. So I coach at Waipahu right now. Um, I'm the OC over there. Um, but this NSR thing that I'm doing as well kind of goes hand in hand, you know, because a lot of us, you guys got nephews and, you know, other, you know, got kids that are always, hey, man, can you help me? Can you call a coach? Can mm-hmm. all these kind of things. And, um, you know, I try to do that as a coach, 
but you know I'm starting to realize you know my outreach isn't as big as I thought you know as far as for that lower tier kind of thing you know mm-hmm. the power five guys we all know you know KB right. Jamie all those guys are at the Rolo all those guys that are out there but you know there's a level in Hawaii um, you know there's kids that you know division two maybe or lower mm-hmm. FCS or you know, division three they all think they can just shoot for here but you know there's another tier where I think you know kids can be helped you know and this NSR thing that I'm doing you know allows those kids that have those options you know i think nice. it's good to shoot for the oregon's usc you know all alabama's um but sometimes everybody's not going to end up over yeah. there there's going to be a lower one but if you just kind of build your recruiting from the start you know third you know division three division two and if you make it to the top so be it but if not at least you have something mm-hmm. you know that they're sitting there right waiting for you. right um and i think there's a need for that because as a, as a high school coach you know a lot of Parents will come to me. They'll ask. They'll text me. Juco route. Yeah. They'll ask me questions and stuff. But you know, this NSR thing that I've been doing kind of helps them get the process started earlier. Get ahead of the curve. You know, get your grades in line. Um, understand that. You know, you, you need two languages. I mean, all those two things. years of language. Yeah. Damn, man. I didn't. So how can like that's great, Nate. That's that's yeah, yeah. huge, bro. So how can they get like they get a hold of you? Like how how can they people that are out there, parents that are wanting their kids to get prepped and to, to, for this type of service how can they get involved well you get you can reach me over on you know on facebook you know just message me on facebook or instagram it's just my, my handle is just nate Lao, just my name n-a-t-e-i-l-a-o-a um and yeah we can go from there you know either i can have you know evaluate your kid or um we can have seminars we can have a sit down interview um to kind of go over you know how those things work you know and some people they just might not have an idea where their kid's at you know they think they're good in the football side but you know their grades might be lacking or mm-hmm. and, and vice versa you know they you know football side they think they're going to do something over here or they nothing against pile on all that stuff that's cool but you know they think all these things but um you know i'd love to sit down with anybody so you know you can reach me on facebook or instagram um and shoot me a, you know a message or anything and or and, and we'll, we'll kind of go from there that's awesome man wow so becoming a coach man that's that's the ultimate goal at the college level that's oh yeah i mean i mean I just find a passion in it from training kids to actually coaching high school. Um, you know, I have a passion for that, you know, and having had awesome coaches in my, you know, life and career, um, I think it's something that's always a need. You know, there's always a kid out there that, you know, I think you know, with the proper guidance, you know, that could flip the switch for him to, you know, pursue that and not just cut off that that avenue of, you know, just have opportunities. You know, a lot of my a lot of kids are like, oh, I'm just going to work construction coach. I'm like, you can work construction, but hey, let's try this real quick. You know, and you never know. And you, I've had some kids go off to smaller schools, um, you know, and it's an awesome opportunity. I mean, we all know, you know, playing college ball, not just how, you know, just how fun it was, you know. Oh, oh Steph. You yeah, know you build mean, lifelong memories. friendships and brothers right, that, that you oh. would have never had if you didn't go to college. Exactly. You know, and, you know, even, even like you guys, you know, just thinking about coming to the show, all those different stories, you know, all the things, you know, and I don't know we're going to get into all of them, but. <laughs> we could, you know, it's just real good memories, you know. One, uh, uh, let's share one, Nate. What share one memory of our time together okay. in college that, that that you remember that that stuck with okay, you? Okay, for Chad. <laughs> <laughs> for Chad, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but Chad's real good in basketball. Chad is an awesome basketball player. What? You, know? you heard right. You heard right. So you see, you're going to talk to this smack with <laughs> Julian's hey. son. I'm about to give him the business. Anyway, yeah, carry yeah. on. No, carry on. No. Chad, Chad can hoop. Okay, and so and us, we had we had these we'd go club gym, club gym, yeah. gym one, gym two. Don't matter what we were doing. After workout, we go play or before meetings or something on a Thursday or something. We go play. And there's a time Chad's in there doing his thing, just stopping on a dime, boom, 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 He's sitting there hitting hezies and all that stuff. And then there comes a call, like all games, where Michael Brewster gets involved. <laughs> <laughs> now it's all coming, it's all coming back. back. But the thing was, like Brewster was, you know, this is a side story. Brewster was just, he was a hothead. He was, he had fought Mikey Q on his first day of, of meetings. He, he's fought so many people. So Chad grabs the ball and Mike swings and hits Chad and Chad's just, and doesn't even say Chad eats it. He's like, <laughs> like throws the ball back at him. And they're just, Bruce is running around and Chad's just chasing around. These guys, I'm just looking at these two athletic guys chasing each other. Like, no one's going to catch each other. They're just two athletic guys just running around and everything like that. <laughs> you know, but just Chad was just so heated. I was just like, oh, okay. What's, and I was tired. I was like, man, what are these guys going to do? But, I mean, that always sticks out to me because afterwards, everybody was cool. <laughs> it was one of those things on the team. You can hit somebody and then everybody talking and then you're all right after, you know. But 
we would always hoop and Chad it always sticks out to me with Chad he can he can do all kinds of things on the football field he's doing stuff on the screens now and you know he's doing shows <laughs> but Chad well, could after. hoop Chad was an awesome hooper and ate a punch from Brewster so either Brewster can't punch or Chad just got a chin <laughs> so it was just, so he can do so many he fights he does all <laughs> so that's what I think about about Chad you know that's that's one of the awesome things is you know Chad you know there's so many different stories you know that we can go into with some of the guys and, and oh, that one always sticks out because I'm just watching two athletic guys chase each other around the gym and I'm like hurry up so we can check this ball and finish this game. <laughs> do you remember when the boxing the boxing nights oh that was my that was my next memory <laughs> You had to stop. We, that was, are these like team you. bondings that you guys? No, uh, it I, was it was just. I don't know what was more random. fun. That was. You tell me that, tell I with, that with was Gary, right? Yeah. Oh, with G. <laughs> After that fight, <laughs> Coach called it quits. No, no more boxing, guys. No more none of this. I mean, those like, are why, those why, fight why, nights. Why, why, what happened? Those, <laughs> fight, those fight nights are awesome. Like. Oh, were, were you in it that, that, that night, Nate? With, with me and G, right? I had it. I was there. But I was the hype man. Remember, I was yes. introducing everybody. Yes. I, I was freestyling for the offensive guys, you and Brewster. Remember, Brewster had the main event, I think, versus <laughs> Pat Jink. Yes. But it, did it even happen? It did. Oh, it, oh, it did. It did. It did. They it thought, did. no, but yours was, I knew it was going to happen. I was like, Bo, but the best part about that story is, remember, we get into fall, right? And we have the rookie show. The rookie show. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and shout out to G-Wright and stuff, but in spring, in spring, he wore pants that said wide receiver killer on it. Remember that? Yep. And that spring, the fight happened. So we already knew when the rookie show was coming around that we were going to get him because you can't wear wide receiver killer on your on your pants and then get, get, get knocked <laughs> out by wide receiver. <laughs> was, okay, hey, 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 look, before we, I, I want to start about Ryan, quick. You have some about Ryan? Oh, Ryan, oh, Ryan, Ryan. Want this fast. Quick, I need, I need you just a, a quick story. You got a minute. No, this boxing one was good. No, I need Ryan. I need, people got to know about Ryan, too. I know okay. there's tons. Think Please, about, mate, think about, think about Ryan. Ryan at UH, okay? He had an older brother nobody knew about named Leonard Peters. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so he played that role to a T, okay, from the hair to the, what is that called when they make the little bun from their long hair? What is that? Yeah. They know they tie the hair back and then they have like a little bump in the, what is that called? Yeah. What do you call like it? Like a man bun. Like no, 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 the little bump, you guys, the, like, not a bun. You guys' hair would be like tied up down on the back, but it would be like a little, anyway, he would wear that out and, oh my gosh, is that you hear, oh my gosh, is that Leonard? Oh, and this guy, <laughs> no, his little brother. They're like, oh, you know, they would play that whole thing, but. Um, he even started talking like him. Yeah, yeah, the whole thing, dressing, the whole... Played my hair, perfect. But then the best thing is, he played like Leonard, too. He was fearless. He'd be out there making plays, running down the field, just knocking heads. Um, you know, and that, I mean, the thing I always remember about Ryan is, like, he would never have a bad day. He was always smiling. He was always happy, uplifting, even to this day. You know, and, and that's the awesome thing about Ryan. You can walk in, Ryan's just like, hey, what? He's just, Aww, he's full on... Ryan positive energy you know and the, you know, good the vibe light, the good light. vibe always yeah. you know and that, you know, that's the cool yeah, thing it keeps stuff light when like when you're in the locker room you know like it, i just feel like it's, it's always so serious like high school was the best part of i had fun in high school but yeah. it got like serious and you know political when it got to college you know and then it gets more political when you get to the league so it's like you gotta just have that yeah. you know that uh, ryan always kept it light i don't ever think i've seen ryan mad so and that's no. that's a good thing always good great. vibes he's always, always, always vibes. positive yeah, man, and Nate, it was uh, man, tons of good vibes having you on the sh on the on the show today, man. Appreciate you, and thank you all so much for tuning in. This is Nate Lawa, and this is running it back. All right, that's the man. Running it back was presented to you by the Honolulu Star Advertiser and Hawaiian Telecom.